Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to look at this uh, Sangamo testing meter again, and we're going to actually get it working this time. As previously, just looked at the uh, insides and how it was assembled. Now it does work, and uh, if you've seen the thing on Twitter and uh, whatever else, you'll have seen a very short video of that working already. So uh, we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail. And I've got various uh, other bits of equipment here, so we can actually uh, test it with uh, real power. Um, we're only using the uh, mains voltage. And we're going to be putting a real load on it, which is this electric fan heater just behind on the side here. So the whole arrangement we've got then is the mains power will connect here. Obviously not plugged in at the moment. It goes into the Variac so we can turn the voltage down to in the sort of 220 range rather than the 245, 250 as it normally is around here. And then the output of the Variac is on the other lead and that goes over the back there. And then plug it into that, goes around the back. And then over here you can see it goes to that red connector block in there and from the front of that we've got uh, two wires coming out which are for the meter which is this uh, orange and grey here so that's just providing the voltage at uh, whatever that happens to be and then additionally we've got another three wires coming out the earth and the neutral which you'll see back down there actually go to the connector strip down the back and then we've got this purple one which comes out of there from the line connection comes up to the meter here, comes out of the meter, and that basically goes back down there to that little connector, which is then connecting onto the brown or the line in the white flex there. And then around the other side, that goes into this connector block. So we've got plugged in there the black lead, which comes up to this small power meter. And then at the back of there, we've got this uh, white flex, which actually comes down to the fan heater on the front. So uh, fairly... Uh, involved arrangement but uh, as far as to say we can adjust the voltage here to something sensible. This will give us an indication of how much power this thing is using and then this of course will uh, turn and operate and do whatever it does and of course it's not perfect because say this uh, thing is actually going to be measuring the power used by this heater and the power monitor so there's not going to be a direct correlation but it's purely just for indication so to get some idea of the amount of power and sort of current things we're actually going to be using. And I also point out that this thing does have great chunks of exposed metalwork here, most of which will become live at mains voltage. So obviously, if you're going to be doing something like this yourself, just bear in mind that uh, none of this can be touched when it's in operation. Now, a couple of notes on the top here. This knob is actually a divider. So in the one position here, this will rotate at a particular speed. And then if we keep the current and everything the same, and say turn it around to the 10 position, then what would happen is it would actually go to tenth of the speed. So basically it's some kind of dividing arrangement. So uh, that's sort of a tenth, that'd be one fiftieth, and so on. But we'll start out on the one because then we can put a fairly low current through and it will uh, obviously turn at a reasonable rate. 220 volts we've set here as we've uh, obviously got that kind of power available. And uh, this little thing here, if you put something in that hole, it pushes out a little peg on the back which locks into the case so you can't take this out of the case without removing the pin. So the deal would have been that a pin would have gone in there, those two wired together, so you could only get the actual thing out of the case by basically cutting the wire, pulling out the pin and then lifting the whole thing out of the casing. Now I've preset this to around 220 so we'll uh, turn on here. And we can see that the uh, power meter is on there. And you'll see it's actually recording a power usage of 0.14 watts. And the reason for this is because this heater has a neon indicator in the front there, and that's actually powered all the time. So essentially what that 0.14 watts is, is just that uh, neon indicator. Uh, this is actually buzzing a bit. That's presumably the uh, coil on the back. It's a bit loose or something. Fairly common in uh, older transformer winding type things. Now if have a look on the top here we'll see that the uh, dial is actually moving and again that's because of the load of the neon there and also that power meter on the top so very slowly creeping around there but uh, obviously a uh, very tiny amount of power being used so uh, if we turn on the actual fan in the fan heater there we'll see that that will then start to go around at a more reasonable rate there will be a bit of noise of course from the uh, fan heater as well so that's just sort of uh, slowly moving around there. And you'll see that the bottom right black pointer is also moving as well. That's just coming out of the one position. And it's the outer one that makes its first revolution. And in terms of power there, then uh, can have a look on the front there. We're now using just over 11.5 watts 
Uh, the voltage is about 223, so that seems reasonable in terms of the capabilities of this device. Now something interesting with this uh, fan heater here, this is on speed 1, so basically it's just the motor turning there, and you see the power is about 11.5 watts, power factor is about 0.8. Now if we turn the speed up to the second speed, power goes up a bit as you'd expect to 12.5, and the power factor has actually gone down to 0.7, but then if we go to the third speed, the power actually goes down again to about 11.7, and the power factor gets considerably worse down to about oh, well, half or 0.5 so uh, some strange bizarre happenings there with the uh, motor. Now if we turn on the first heat setting on the actual fan we should see the current go up quite considerably and uh, so they were doing about 450 watts or so and if we go back to the uh, meter here you now see it's going at a considerable rate there so uh, that's the outside one there and you'll see that the bottom pointer there moves basically one division for each rotation of the outer one and then the bottom left black pointer is just going around one division per full rotation of the black pointer at the right so that's going out to the zero there and the one's on just on three there and then as that comes around so six seven eight nine and then zero see the one on the left there has now got up to four so there are also multiples of ten of each other and um, we can also see the red pointers there, the 100th one and the uh, one above it are again slowly moving around to record the actual power that's being used. Now as you can see that's actually rotating at a fairly fast speed on the outer one. So what I'll do now is just uh, switch this off. I'll alter the uh, divider there to 10 and we should see that the pointer goes at about a tenth of the speed it's doing at the moment. So everything else is the same, same settings on the heat and whatever, and I've just changed the top dial there to 10, and you'll see now that it's rotating at about a tenth of its previous speed. So this uh, knob here is basically just a divider using the transformer that we've seen in the bottom previously. Now back to the one on the dial there, and as it's going around uh, more slowly, I've just turned the fan on only because I don't really want the heater on as it's uh, August and this is an enclosed space. So make it pretty hot there. The uh, dot on the dial incidentally is actually off so when it's in that position this doesn't rotate at all it's basically disconnecting the uh, current connections on the side there so essentially it's off one and then divided by whatever the numbers are on the top dial. Here's a look inside the mechanism at the top and you can just about see the pointer in the top there rotating away and the various uh, hooks and things underneath course rotate at various speeds as they're all sort of geared down from that central shaft which comes in from underneath and that drives the entire set of pointers on the top both the uh, black for the number of revolutions and the red which will be for the kilowatt hour arrangement and uh, we'll just have a look over the other side there See the disc is slightly warped as it uh, revolves around there, but uh, it's not actually dragging or catching on anything else, so not a problem. This is looking in from the back of the mechanism, so you just about see this small cog in the middle there, which is from the shaft, and then of course there's other ones uh, driven from that. Now this has been running for a few minutes now and you can see that the pointers on the right there, the two red ones, are moving around in response to the others there. Of course they're going to move fairly slowly as that's the actual amount of power that's used. Of course it's fairly small at the moment but you can see the top one has moved uh, a couple of points there and then the bottom one is uh, still pretty much where it was to start with. Now have a look on the back here, you'll see that this uh, plastic casing here has got a bit of a split in the middle, which is probably where that loose coil is for the potential, which is probably where the buzzing comes from. This is turned off at the moment, obviously, we're not putting our fingers in the live equipment. In fact, see it's just basically popped apart there, 
presumably due to age, but say it does still work uh, perfectly well. So that's probably where the buzzing is coming from. So that's the Sangamo test meter, and I say it does work and seems to be uh, fully useful, apart from that minor buzzing bit at the back, so probably due to that uh, cracked plastic casing back there. And unfortunately this is not the kind of thing you can really use now because of course the uh, terminals on the top here are all completely exposed so when it's in use you've got your mains voltages basically appearing on the top there so uh, not something you're going to be using these days. And of course when this was actually made people had uh, more common sense than uh, some people do today. So that's it for this time and until next time thanks for watching.